This is the all-new Minisforum G1 Pro, packing a 16-core, 32-thread CPU along with a desktop RTX GPU. This thing is super small form factor, and so far it's actually putting down some really great performance. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Minisforum G1 Pro. And recently at CES, I did check this out. Really love the design. It's a very small form factor gaming PC from the company, and it actually supports a desktop GPU. So we'll go ahead and get this thing out. And again, I do love the design. It does have some RGB up front. We'll take a look at that in just a bit, but it's a very small unit, as you can see. This PC is meant to set up vertically on the desk. It does come with a stand and the way it's designed, if you wanted to set it horizontally, you'd have to kind of flip it upside down. So the Menace Forum logo on the front would be upside down, but it would be totally possible to do so. And inside of the box, along with the G1 Pro, we're also going to get our power cable, 6-foot HDMI cable. Also comes with an extra M.2 heatsink because we've got two slots in here. And of course, that vertical stand, which is super easy to install. It's got a thumb screw right here on the bottom. Plus, there's some extra pegs here on the bottom of the unit, so this isn't going to twist around once it's installed. All we need to do is put that thumb screw in, and now we can set this up vertically. When it comes to I.O., up here on the front, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, a full-size USB 3.2 port, and our power button. Moving around back, when it comes to video output, we've got three display ports, one full-size HDMI port, another USB Type-C port, two more full-size USB 3.2 ports, another full-size HDMI port, a 5-gig Ethernet port, power input for the built-in power supply, and a power switch. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs of the new G1 Pro, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 8945H jack. 16 cores, 32 threads, and we've got a max clock up to 5.4 gigahertz. This utilizes SODIMM DDR5 RAM up to 5200 megatransfers per second, a dual channel configuration, and you can add up to 96 gigs. I've got 32 gigs installed here. It's got two M.2 slots that'll support either a 2230 or 2280 drives, both up to four terabytes each. So you can add a total of eight terabytes of SSD storage in this mini PC. When it comes to the GPU, this comes preloaded with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 low profile desktop GPU with eight gigs of G DDR7 VRAM. Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, a built-in 350-watt power supply, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. It's actually pretty simple to get inside of the G1 Pro to upgrade the storage and RAM. There's a couple screws on the bottom and the back that you'll need to remove, but then we can actually slide the side panel right off. Just give you a look here. Lots of ventilation for that uh, cooler and the GPU here. And the way this is set up is actually pretty neat. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got that 350-watt power supply. Right in the middle, we've got a pretty significantly large uh, blower-style cooler for that 8945HX. And over on their website, they state that the cooler itself has five pure copper heat pipes. Right below that cooling system, we've got our dual slots for that SODIMM RAM. And of course, over on the right-hand side, we've got that low-profile RTX 5060. So this thing does put down some really good performance. I've tested it in the past and they are using the gigabyte version, but it looks like we'll be able to fit other low profile dual slot GPUs if we wanted to. So I've been up and running with the G1 Pro for a little while now. I wanted to give you a look at a few things. Uh, as you can see, we've got that 8945HX. I mean, this is a really good mobile CPU. We've got 16 cores, 32 threads, and that boost up to 5.4 gigahertz. This thing does put down some really amazing performance. When it comes to memory, the way this was set up out of the box is we've got 32 gigs, but it's only running in single channel. So uh, with RAM prices right now, I've been seeing this quite a bit from uh, mini PC manufacturers, only adding one DIMM instead of two, like uh, two 16 gig sticks. I guess they can get out cheaper doing it this way, possibly, maybe, I don't know. But you do have that extra DIMM so you can upgrade. But uh, what this is gonna hurt is iGPU performance. Good thing we're actually not going to be using it. I mean, if you wanted to, you definitely could. It's the AMD Radeon 610M. Not the most powerful on the market, but it's there if you want to kind of offload some GPU workloads over there. Instead of using that, 
We've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 with that 8 gigs of VRAM and it's GDDR7. We've also got some Minisform software here to help us with performance. And uh, I guess this is just the Minisform control panel. So we've got three different modes to work with and we can always go into the BIOS and do this ourselves if we want to. Office, gaming, and beast mode. In office mode, it's gonna take the TDP up on that 8945HX to 60 watts. Gaming mode, 80 watts on the TDP. And beast mode, 100 watt TDP on the CPU. And through all of these modes here, it's also gonna control the fan. So obviously like office mode, fan speed's gonna be really low there at 60 watts. This doesn't affect GPU performance because we've got that dedicated GPU and through all, we've got a TGP up to around 145. For my testing, I'm gonna be in beast mode. And remember with beast mode, you can see cooling goes up. The fans will get a bit louder here. And, um, oh, I thought we may have, here it is, CPU, GPU fan speed. So if we go to office, this is gonna drop on down. You can see it drops down significantly. Lighting mode for the front. And uh, with some of their other mini PCs with RGB, we didn't have as much control here. I personally love the way the RGB on this looks. You've got the twin jump. You've got the breathing mode. We've got the flow mode always on and we can adjust the color from here rainbow wave continuous flow and out of the box when i booted this up this is what we saw it actually fills both of those rgb bars up and it does look pretty good we've also got speed and brightness that we can control uh, from settings got our update that's about it uh launch it startup if you want to but yeah, the system mode really does help out. And again, through all of my testing, we're going to be in beast mode. And the very first thing I want to look at are some benchmarks that I just ran on this thing. When it comes to Geekbench 6, I was pretty impressed by this score, given that we've got the 8945HX coming in with a single of 2,959, multi 18,693. I don't think uh, without any overclocking, we're not going to hit 20,000 on this chip here. But in beast mode, it's definitely putting down some really good performance. 3D Mark Steel Nomad coming in with a total score of 3,236. And our FPS was 32.36. And I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy. We almost hit 13,000. And I do think with a little bit of overclocking on the GPU, we could. But we're at 12,985. So far, taking a look at these synthetics, not a bad little setup. Now, well, one thing I'm kind of concerned about are temperatures. So while we're testing out some gaming, we will keep an eye on that. And by the end, we'll get an idea of, you know, how hot the CPU and GPU get in this small form factor case. So let's go ahead and move over to some gaming now. And here's Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm at an ultra high mix uh, from the little slider bar there. It's just kind of all mixed up, but going down the list, I mean, ultra to high with DLSS set to quality, we're seeing averages in the low 90s with it. And I kind of suspected we would. Uh, one thing I wanted to keep an eye on, obviously, were the temps. And you can see that the CPU in beast mode is getting a bit hot, but it's a mobile CPU. If this was a desktop, you know, I'd be concerned about going up to 85. But with this 8945HX, I mean, I haven't hit thermal throttle yet on it, fingers crossed. So let's go ahead and check something else out. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those games that does perform really well, especially with DLSS 4. Now I'm not using frame gen, and with most of the stuff that we're testing, you could enable multi-frame gen, at least with the newer games. There's actually only one that I'm going to be using it with because it's kind of required with a lower end 5060 and going up to 1440. But with this, I've got the ultra preset and with the preset, it usually takes FSR to quality. I've just changed that to DLSS quality. We're using DLSS 4 here, looking at an average of around 71 FPS. Spider-Man 2, hit or miss on a lot of different systems. Uh, it really does feel like the game itself and the shader cache just kind of messed up sometimes. So sometimes I'll boot this up with a system like this and see around 70 FPS. But right now, with this setup at very high and DLSS set to balanced using the Transformer model, which is DLSS form, 
We're over 80 FPS on average with it. Feels pretty good, but there were some areas where it did drop significantly. I don't think I ever caught it going under 60, but it did get kind of close. I also like throwing at least one fighting game in, so I just went with Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, obviously, something like Street Fighter 6 is going to run at 1440 maxed out just fine. But right now, we're at high with no DLSS. We're getting a continuous 60 FPS. And the final game I tested here was Borderlands 4, and I mentioned earlier that uh, I was going to be testing one game with some DLSS multi-frame gen. This is it. So at 1440 high settings, if we're not using frame gen, this is going to be in the low 50s, high 40s. But with DLSS 4 frame gen set to X4, we're over 100 FPS on average. And on this RTX 5060 at high settings 1440, not bad at all. I mean, it feels pretty good like this, even though we're generating some fake frames here. The last thing we need to talk about here are CPU and GPU temps. Now, with the small form factor unit, uh, things are going to get a bit hotter. And remember, through all of the testing, we're in beast mode which takes the TDP up on that 8945HX to 100 watts in this thing. So when it comes to 1440p gaming, our average temps there on the CPU were 86 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded using hardware info in the background was 93. I do believe that even just taking it up to 80 watts is still going to give us the same kind of performance, and it's going to keep it cooler. And when it comes to the GPU temps, remember we've got that low profile RTX 5060, 65 degrees Celsius, 1440p gaming on average, and the maximum I recorded from that was only 70 degrees Celsius. Overall, it's definitely a great performer. I kind of suspected it would be with that 8945HX paired up with that low profile RTX 5060. Personally, I do love the look of this thing. I think it's a very sleek looking small form factor PC, and I do want to make at least one more video. I actually want to install a different GPU, something like the uh, Intel Arc B50. I think for a little workstation, something like this would be pretty awesome. And it should fit in here just fine. And when it comes to gaming performance, we're not going to see the kind of performance that we got out of the RTX 5060. But when it comes to like AI workloads, having 16 gigs of VRAM instead of 8 is really going to help out with that Arc Pro B50. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look at the Menace Forum G1 Pro. If there's anything else you want to see running on this thing, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.